morning. So today I'm going to can some pinto beans. Um, but first I wanted to say that I am not, uh, I guess, doing this as part of the canuary thing. I did not know that you had to be invited to do that. I thought it was just like a key word that you use so that people that are canning in January can find different videos that they might be interested in to learn how to can different things. So I did remove that from the uh, video I did on the ghee, um, the keyword in the tag box. So I'm just canning pinto beans just well because I only have two jars left and so we do need more. Um, I am going to do the smaller jars this time because the two that I have left are the bigger jars and we seem to just waste a lot of it or it goes to the chicken. So I guess it's really not a waste. But um, I do apologize for using that word. I was not aware it was an invite only. So anyway, I am going to move forward, move on, whatever. Um, so I'm going to be canning can, uh, pinto beans. Pinto beans. Pinto beans today so that I can get them on my shelf. And Tavi's saying good morning too. So I've had these soaking all night long. Um, I used the recipe out of the ball canning book. So these have been soaking. I'm going to go ahead and get them rinsed out and new water put in it so that I can get them on the stove. Okay, I've got my jars out of the garage. I'm going to let them sit here to get to room, at least room temperature, before I wash them uh, with hot soapy water because I do keep them in the garage so they're super cold. And I've got my pot of beans on the stove. Once they start to simmer, I will start a timer and let them simmer for 30 minutes. Okay, my timer just went off. These have simmered for 30 minutes. The reason you soak them overnight and then simmer them for 30 minutes is because they are the size they are going to be fully processed. And that way you don't have any issues with overfilling jars or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and get my jars washed with hot soapy water and get canning some uh, pinto beans. Okay, I've got all of my jars filled but one. I thought I would, so you didn't have to sit through, oops, wrong one. Sit through the whole thing of me filling them. You're gonna add your beans. And you want it to where it's right at the bottom of where the rings go on. You're going to use the same juice you cooked it in. And you want to leave one inch headspace. I couldn't find my bubbler, so I'm using the back end of a, a knife, a plastic knife. This lets all the air bubbles out, and sometimes, not always, but sometimes, when you let the air bubbles out, your juice will go down below the one-inch headline, so you'll need to just add a little bit more. But this one actually came out perfect. Okay. Put your lid on, your ring. This is the part that confuses everybody. Fingertip tight. So basically, you're going to hold it with your fingertips. As soon as your fingertips meet resistance, you stop. You're not cranking it down. Put it in my canner. Okay, I've got them in my canner, so I'm going to put the lid on. Okay, so those of you that are new to canning, you always want to check this. Uh, make sure you can see through it. Make sure you, when you store this, you don't store it with it on there. You put it on and keep it wrapped whenever you're not using it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this heat up until steam comes out of this. Once the steam starts coming out, I will let it vent and basically blow steam for 10 full minutes before I put, um, the, put the weight on it. See, there's a weight, but I'm not going to put that on until it steams for 10 full minutes. Okay, it's been venting for 10 minutes, but after I stopped the video, I looked down and saw my paper towel with the vinegar on it and realized I did not wipe that last jar. So I did take it out of the canner, I wiped the jar, 
put a new lid um, on it just for my own peace of mind. I probably didn't need to put a new lid on it. I could have just rinsed it off, but I did it for my own peace of mind. So always, always, always wipe the rims of your jars to make sure there is no juice or grease or food particles or anything on it that could prevent it from sealing. So this has been venting for 10 minutes. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so I got like a spoon. I don't know if you can see it or not. I don't want to like burn myself trying here. See, it's got the steady stream of steam. So now what I'm going to do is put that on there. That popped up, so I do have full pressure in here, or not full pressure, but the excess air out of here. Now I'm going to wait till this, for, for my area, we do between 13 and 15 PSI, so I will wait till it gets up to there. It's very hard to maintain it exactly like, you know, 14 or whatever, so as long as I'm in at least, you know, close to 15 and not over, once it gets up to pressure, I will start my timer for 90 minutes, and we'll go from there. Okay, we are finally at pressure, so I'm going to start my timer for 90 minutes. So I'm making all kinds of blubbles through this video. First, I forgot to wipe the one jar, and I think it's because I'm trying to multitask too many things. And then also, it's not 90 minutes because I'm doing the smaller jars this time. I always do the bigger jars, the quart-sized jars, so those are 90 minutes. But since I'm doing the pint-sized jars this time, it's actually only 75 minutes. So I have started the timer for 75 minutes. Okay, so after the timer goes off, you shut off the uh, flame to the pressure canner. You let it sit. You don't mess with it. Do not take the lid off. You let it sit until the pressure is completely out. And this is down. And your pressure on your gauge is completely at zero. After you do that, then you remove your weight, you let it sit for about another five, maybe maybe ten minutes, take the lid off and pull it, you know, when, whenever you take it off, you tilt it away from you so that the steam doesn't burn you. So I've already done that. Um, sorry I didn't get that on recording, I just have other things going on, plus I'm trying to work. Uh, while I'm doing this as well. So let me show you, I think you can hear my popping in the background. So we have a thing, every time you hear that, that pop sound, we go, good job, because it's like the jar is telling us good job. So let me show you what we've got. So here are my 10 jars of pinto beans, and they are all sealing and making the wonderful popping sound. Once they have sat and are completely cooled off, they'll, they'll sit here probably through the night. So tomorrow, I will take the rings off and I will wipe the jars down with vinegar because we do have hard water so we get the film on it. But whenever you set your jars, you want to make sure none of them are touching each other, that they're all, you know, separated from each other. So there you have it. That is how you uh, can pinto beans. I do apologize immensely for all of the bloopers that I had today. Um... I promise I do know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for umpteenth of years. Just I switched jars our sizes this time because I used to have a larger household, so I did the bigger jars, and now we have just two of us, so I'm realizing I need to start canning more in the smaller jars so that less goes to waste. But anyway, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Um, hit us up on Instagram. We are on there as well, and I do try to answer everybody's comments or questions as I get them. And remember, every day is a new beginning. Stay blessed.